located on Long Island, New York. There are the remains of what was once a top-of-the-line psychiatric facility resting in ruins. In its glory days, the facility was a self-sufficient city of its own, the abandoned city known as Kings Park Psychiatric Center. Kings Park closed their doors to patients in 1996 and has remained mostly abandoned ever since. When it opened in 1885, it was known as Kings County Asylum. It was revolutionary at the time because it was drastically different from the overcrowded facilities of Brooklyn. Kings County Asylum had patients perform farming tasks, which was believed to be therapeutic. Eventually, Kings County Asylum developed problems of its own, including the overcrowdedness of its patients. This led to New York State taking control of the facility and ultimately a name change to Kings Park State Hospital. Due to the exponential growth of its patient population and the need to expand, the state turned the hospital into a self-contained community with all of its food growth, power and heat generation, and even its own railroad spur. On site, laundry buildings, doctor housing, a maintenance shop, a firehouse, and a theater would all be built. The facility peaked at over 100 buildings. Kings Park State Hospital became a city. The maximum occupancy was reached shortly after World War II. The highest reported patient total reached just over 9,000. Around this time, treating the mentally ill took a dark turn from the relaxation philosophy. Prefrontal lobotomies and electroshock therapies became the customary treatment option. These treatments were short-lived and abandoned in 1955 thanks to the advancements in medication. For example, the introduction of the drug Thorazine. Thorazine was the first drug widely used to treat mental illness. The drug acts as a dopamine antagonist by blocking dopamine receptors in the central nervous system. In addition, it blocked many other biochemical regulators, which made it very useful in the treatment of schizophrenia. The clinical use of Thorazine is thought to be one of the most important advances in the history of psychiatric care. Modern medication made patients capable of living at home and treating themselves, thus leading to the downfall of large psychiatric facilities. Kings Park Psychiatric Center was not alone to the decline of patients on Long Island. The New York State Office of Mental Health devised the plan to close Kings Park, as well as the Central Islip Psychiatric Center in the early 1990s. The remaining patients would either be discharged or transferred to Pilgrim Psychiatric Center, which was reduced in size but is still operational today. In 1996, the plan was executed and Kings Park closed after 111 years of service. Today, many buildings still stand in testament to their great history. The grounds are now a state park with the large majority of its buildings abandoned and boarded up. They are condemned with signs warning not to enter. But has that stopped anyone before? We are about to take a look inside a few of the buildings that still stand and see what 20 years of being left to decay has done to the place. What's found inside invokes the curiosities of what it once was. First off, we do not endorse the idea of going inside. Exploring can be dangerous, and precautions were taken during filming. One of the reasons we made this was to give you a glimpse of the inside without the danger. Two of the most famous buildings of Kings Park are numbers 7 and 93. 
but let's save the best for last. Let's start by exploring building number 15. Building 15 is located adjacent to building 93 and is right on Kings Park Boulevard. Building 15 was the violent ward and housed the patients whose ghost you do not want to run into. Building 15 was also known as Wisteria House. It contains many day rooms and fresh air rooms, which have a lot of windows so patients could look outside and watch life go by. If you're lucky, you can even find a few pool tables. Building 15 is one of the less explored buildings, so it's still possible to find some of the old paperwork inside with details about the residents. There are also a number of interesting finds located in the basement, such as a knock hockey table, an old TV set, and there is even a closet with some of the unopened cleaning supplies. On another note, this building is known to be the most haunted of the facility due to its violent past. There have been multiple first-hand warnings from people stating not to enter due to their traumatizing experiences while inside. Next up is Building 5. Building 5 is one of the more hidden gems due to its smaller size and overgrowth of trees surrounding it. It's found behind 15 and 93 and up the hill from 29. Building 5 was originally built as a laundry building, but was later turned into a maintenance workshop. It was used to do woodworking, plumbing, and locksmithing. The building is similar to a warehouse. Inside, you can find many shelves for part storage and various types of plywood. There are so many shelves here that you can skip the trip to Ikea and pick one up. Buildings 21 and 22 are next on our list. 21 and 22 are right next to building 7 and are even connected to 7 via a central hallway or breezeway. Twenty-one and twenty-two are considered two separate buildings, despite being connected, and are very, very similar. They are connected by passing through the kitchen, which was used to feed the patients housed in these two buildings. Between the two buildings is a courtyard that is closed in by a brick wall, so nobody would wander off. In the courtyard, patients could shoot some hoops on the basketball courts or chill in the central gazebo. And if they misbehaved, there was even a timeout section. Walking the halls, you can get in the holiday spirit because this room is still full of decorations for Halloween, Thanksgiving, and Christmas. There are many paintings also still intact. Welcome to the Kings Park Art Show. 
Building 29 was the newest of the four power plants Kings Park had during its operation. The facility burned coal for its source of electricity and steam production. The generated power was then delivered to the other buildings through underground tunnels. The upper levels of the building are primarily made out of steel grates. The grates are not bolted down and can be rearranged for lifting machinery to upper levels or making floor plan changes if necessary. There are valves and smaller parts on the shelves that never made their way into use. The control room can be found on the main floor. Within it are the remnants of computers and the control panels that would warn the operators of equipment malfunctions. Operation manuals are scattered across the room. Despite closing in 1996, the power plant remained open to provide electricity to the few buildings that were still in use and to the streetlights. Newspapers can be found that count down to the start of the year 2000. The plant ceased production after it was tampered with by vandals, resulting in the lights and remaining buildings being switched to a different power grid. On March 27, 2013, the smokestack was imploded. Buildings 41, 42, and 43 were together known as the quads, or Group 4, which were all connected. Forty-one and forty-three were the patient buildings, and forty-two was the kitchen. The quads are in very poor condition and are frequently flooded. There are walkable tunnels that connect this building to the power plant. A variety of old dishwashing machines can be found centrally on each floor. Each floor is very similar with all the hallways and building structure that juts out from the center being identical. The quads formed boxed-in courtyards between each section of the building. The building layout of the quads was very popular, and the design was used at many other asylums. While we did not make it inside Building 44, it suffered a fire in late 2014, which resulted in a gaping hole in the upper floor. Building 44 is located behind Building 93 and was the storage building. Within it were many large fridges and freezers to store food. There is also a forklift which is rumored to be rotting inside. Buildings 136 and 137 are also connected. They are located on the Nesicog State Park side. Originally, these buildings were the medical and surgical buildings before the construction of Building 7. They had their own kitchen and dining area. The two buildings are connected by two hallways, one of which there is spray paint with arrows pointing to each building, calling one heaven and the other hell. Hell points towards 137, and heaven points towards 136. Guess the cooking was bad.
these buildings have seen better days. You can find plants and moss growing from the floor on the top level. The building is huge and has countless hallways. The building has some interesting finds, such as an old typewriter and a mop with a bucket. Someone even had some fun with fake blood inside. As stated earlier, King's Park was like a city. It had its own water tower, also known as Building 45. The water tower delivered water to all of the buildings throughout the underground pipes. Buildings 7 and 93 were too tall for the water tower to supply water to the top few floors, so they had to use large water tanks in the attics. The water tower is guarded by the pigeons that live within it. If you can live past them and their odor, it's possible to climb to the top of the water tower. The view is simply amazing and worth the climb. Pottersfield is known for being one of the most creepy locations within the entire facility. Pottersfield is where the unclaimed patients were buried after they passed away or if funeral arrangements were not paid beforehand. It is located a short walk away from the water tower. There is just a single plaque at the field entrance to commemorate those patients. Stop by if you wish to pay your respects. The two most well-known buildings within Kings Park are buildings number 7 and 93. Building 7 stands a massive 13 stories tall. Building 7 was one of the last buildings to be constructed. It was used for medical and surgical purposes, hydrotherapy, and even had a morgue. The morgue trays open on both sides, one to drop off bodies and the other to privately perform autopsies. Another area of interest is the x-ray room. The x-ray machine hangs from tracks on the ceiling and is still somewhat mobile. The building has been on fire multiple times, and it's easy to spot where the fires were. On top of Building 7 is an antenna that was used as a police radio transmitter.
Building 7 also had many dormitory areas for the patients. Since Building 7 is one of the newest built, it still looks rather clean on the inside compared to some of the others, most of which have collapsing roofs. This is probably the most active building for kids and explorers to enter, which has led to large amounts of graffiti, and everything that was left behind has been ransacked. The poster child of Kings Park is the beautiful Gothic architecture of Building 93. Building 93 is 13 floors and the tallest building of the center. Starting from the bottom, the basement still holds many old bed frames and murals on the walls painted by former patients. A portion of the mural was removed and is now located in a museum at Pilgrim State. Similar to Building 7, Building 93 is structurally sound but also subjected to graffiti. On that note, Pokemon fans can find some ghost Pokemon on the walls. In order to gain roof access, you'll have to go through the attic. When first entering the attic, there is a wheel that could possibly spin forever. Exploring the attic involves walking across some wooden planks laid across the beams. There are spots where you can see down to the lower level because the insulation fell. The largest balcony on the highest level overlooks the rear of the building with a view of the power plant and the quads. Beautiful inside and out, but dark secrets are locked within. While cameras were not able to capture what happened here, the buildings keep the memory of this historic place alive. Rumors about Kings Park flood the internet, stating that it is quote unquote haunted or about the terrible ways the patients were treated. We will never fully be able to know the true history of these magnificent buildings. However, we can still use them as a portal to take us back to the days when these buildings stood proud in operation. Now, they are ghosts of themselves, but they still stand, and they still serve a purpose King's Park Psychiatric Center is a historical landmark of the city it was.